In this video, I'm going to talk about audio behaviors. Now, I've prepared a little uh, skit that I want to play through, and then we'll talk about how the sounds were evoked throughout the skit. As I walked through the cobbled streets of my quaint little town, a symphony of sounds enveloped me, capturing the essence of Victorian life. Each step I took seemed to resonate with the echoes of my ancestors, blending harmoniously with the melodies of the bustling world around me. I shall endeavor to recount the distinct sounds that accompanied me on my leisurely stroll. The first sound that greeted my ears was the clip-clop of horse hooves upon the worn pavement. The rhythmic beat created by the carriage horses pulling their elegant chariots set the tempo of the town's movement. It was a familiar sound, soothing and comforting, echoing the traditions of our ancestors. Intertwined with the steady cadence of hooves, the laughter of children filled the air. Their gleeful chatter and innocent giggles resonated through the streets, infusing joy into the atmosphere. Their games and playfulness reminded me of the passing of time and the promise of a brighter future. I continued on my path, and my ears were soon drawn to the clinking of glassware emanating from the open doors of the local tavern. The sound of merry toasts and lively conversations wafted through the air, accompanied by the occasional raucous laughter. It was a harmonious medley of social bonding, a testament to the camaraderie that united the townsfolk. As I passed the blacksmith's workshop, the rhythmic clang of hammers against anvils filled my ears. The symphony of metal upon metal reverberated with each resounding strike, a testament to the industrious spirit of our town. It spoke of craftsmanship and the relentless pursuit of perfection. Amongst the sounds of industry, a melodic interlude emerged from the distance. It was the soft strains of a piano floating through an open window, intertwining with the gentle rustle of lace curtains. The delicate notes danced upon the breeze, evoking feelings of nostalgia and longing for a world beyond our small town. A sudden gust of wind carried the melodious chirping of birds from the nearby trees. Their cheerful songs heralded the arrival of spring, infusing the air with nature's harmonious serenade. The trills and warbles of these feathered musicians resonated with the promise of renewal and the beauty of the natural world. Amidst the bustling soundscape, the rhythmic clatter of shoemaker's tools caught my attention. The tapping and pounding of cobblers hard at work blended with the faint scent of leather, evoking images of skilled artisans fashioning footwear to protect and adorn our townsfolk. As I approached the market square, the clamor of voices grew louder. The vendors, each with their distinctive cries, competed for the attention of passers-by. The shouts of fruit sellers mingled with the bargaining banter of customers, creating a vibrant tapestry of commerce and livelihood. Nearby, the grand church bells began to chime, their deep, resonant tones echoing across the town. Their majestic peals announced the hour, calling the faithful to prayer and marking the passage of time. The harmonious tolls seemed to connect heaven and earth, reminding us of our mortal journey. Finally, as I neared the end of my stroll, the distant roar of a passing train reached my ears. The steam engine's whistle pierced the air, announcing its presence with a commanding blast. The rumble of its wheels against the tracks underscored the progress of the modern world, juxtaposing the old with the new. These were the sounds that accompanied me on my leisurely walk through the streets of my small Victorian town, once upon a time. Together, they formed a vibrant symphony of life, a testament to the human spirit and the timeless melodies that have echoed through the ages. Oh, how I miss it also. All right, so let's take a look and see how all those sounds were played throughout the skit. So at, uh, the first sound we heard was the robins chirping. Um, and to do that, I added a random sound zone here. So it's just a, a trigger zone with a random sound behavior. Um, I didn't need a random sound anywhere in the skit. Um, so this was kind of hard to come up with a way to use this one, to be honest. So what I did was I added all uh, Robin to all four slots. So that way it was sure to play um, the sound that I wanted. Uh, which sort of defeats the purpose of random sound, but you know what? <laughs> I had to use it somehow. Um, so 
what I did notice, and, and something I wanted to bring up about it, is if I didn't put a sound in all four slots, what would happen is that there would be a chance that it wouldn't play anything at all. So if I only put in two Robin sounds, it's still going to pick a, a random number between one and four, so there would be a 50% chance that it wouldn't play anything at all. And maybe that's what you want. I don't know. Uh, so just can bear that in mind if you choose to use random sound anywhere. And then as we got closer to this corner, uh, we heard the clopping of uh, horse uh, hooves on pavement, and that was done here uh, with the fade in sound. So in all of these cases, and I'm only going to go through this once unless it varies, uh, but I would say in, in all, if not uh, most, if not all of these cases, the uh, settings are pretty much the same. You've got the range, which is going to say, you know, when does this uh, zone uh, detect the player how, how close do you have to be for it to start now uh, the minimum volume the maximum volume and that's you know 100 percent of the volume of the audio playing right so this is not a sound um uh, gosh i'm not even sure what the right term would be it's you can't adjust the audio of the um sound itself um, but you can adjust how loud it plays, if that makes sense. So in other words, at max val uh, volume, the original sounds in all of these uh, that I played were really loud. Um, and so I had to go and remix them first. I had to take them and put them into DaVinci uh, Resolve and lower the volumes a little bit so that they were a little softer and didn't overtake the narrator's voice. Um, so just bear that in mind. You may have to do some manipulations of the sound files that you have uh, before you try loading them in. And of course, this is the sound slot that you apply it to. Uh, so all of those uh, that I'm using have those uh, those basic uh, settings. and I'm not going to continuously uh, go over those. I think you get it. Um, so in order to bridge the gap between the fade in sound here and the children playing here, um, I used looped 3D sound multiple. So as you can see, it's got the same settings we talked about, but here we have multiple sound uh, slots. Now, what's different about this one is I could only put, I could put two in and it would only play the two. Um, and that was okay. It was okay to leave a couple of them blank. Uh, one thing I could have done differently is I could have tapered the children sound so that it uh, was not so... Uh, loud straight away it could have like faded in um, but that I would have had to do as a manipulation of the actual sound file because there's no, no way to do that from the behavior itself so just again bear that in mind you may have to alter your audio files to make them really sound good uh, as we rounded the corner we heard uh, the restaurant play, uh, playing and that's uh, in ambience once in zone um, and so as I enter the zone, it plays. And as long as I'm in the zone, it plays. And then uh, it only plays the one time. So if the, if the audio were to end prior to me leaving the zone, it's not going to repeat. Right? Um, zone height, I guess, is the only thing that's a little different about this one. And that's just really about how, um, how high you can be above the zone. So that's, I think, more about the zone than it is the sound or the uh, behavior, I should say. Uh, see, as we got down the ramp here, uh, this is gonna be a little bit harder to get to because it's under the building. And the reason it's under the building is because I had to stretch the zone so that it would repeat. Uh, but here we can see I'm using sound repeat in zone. So as I enter the zone, we hear the blacksmith hammer. And I think it plays like two or three times because it's rather short. Um, so I had to stretch the zone out for it to play the entire time that I wanted it to. And it, it would just kind of repeat in the zone as many times as needed. Um, so um, I guess this would be the blacksmith shop. And then uh, let's see. Now, this was a little bit tricky to get right, but we heard two things as we approached this place here. Um, the first thing we sort of started to hear was the um, piano. Um, and so as we approach the piano uh, sound, he, he talks about the rustle of curtains. So I put in a sound in zone right here. That's actually right here. This add audio zone just 
kind of dragged it right in there and applied the uh, the zone. Now in this zone, you have the options to uh, only play it one time. Uh, so I check that, and then also spawn at start. Uh, meaning I could trigger the zone. I could add a trigger zone that triggers the zone, if that makes sense. Uh, but it's just, uh, it's automatically uh, spawned and ready to go as the, the game starts. Um, so getting the timing right so that this continue to play this, uh, oops, wrong item, um, this 3D loop sound, as well as the rustle of curtains when I needed it was, you know, little trial and error but i got it got it okay uh let's see here as we got down this way we heard the robins playing there it is okay so once again ambiance in zone here um and i this time i didn't check the sound only play in in zone so that means that <clears throat> if i exit the zone and the audio file is still playing it's still going that uh, it would continue and finish it wouldn't just abruptly stop um, I thought that if that were to happen I didn't want a bird sound to just immediately stop that would be weird um, so that, that was my thought process in that one let's see okay so this area here I think I put it on yeah I put I just put it on a jug uh, once again, I'm using loop 3D sound. I found that to be the most versatile or the most useful because it really is just a 3D area. So uh, like all the way around um, and it continues to, to, you know, play in any direction, um, at, you know, at the same volume. So that's, that's kind of like, you know, what I liked uh, about that one. I think loop in sound um, or fade in sound rather is also pretty useful. Uh, but that's the one I chose for that. Uh, let's see here. I'm pretty sure they're all the same from this point forward. So we have, um, again, loop 3D sound here for the vendors. Uh, so you heard the, the merchants talking. Um, we have loop 3D sound for the church bells as well. And then this was also kind of a little bit tricky to do. Um, the uh, zone, the sound itself, the audio file that I had for the train starts with a rumbling of uh, the wheels on the tracks, but I wanted it for its whistle, which was kind of in there a little bit. It was, it was sort of towards the middle of the audio. And so I needed a zone that stretched here and started playing it early um, so that by the time I rounded the corner and got to here, it actually whistled right on cue, so it was actually pretty pretty good. But still, just using a, a uh, trigger zone with sound and zone so that it plays while I'm in there. And I just wanted it to play once. I didn't want to risk, uh, risk the chance of it looping. Um, so I've got that there. And that uh, that's all the, the uh, uh, audio types. So random sound, fade in sound, um, loop 3D sound, multiple, uh, ambiance once in zone, sound repeat in zone, sound in zone, ambiance in zone, and loop 3D sound. Um, the only one I didn't use is fade out sound. And that's a, it's similar to fade in sound. As you get closer to the object with fade in sound, it, it gets louder. Fade out sound would be the opposite. As you get closer to the object, the sound goes away. And frankly, I just couldn't come up with a single use case for that. I tried and tried. Um, and I couldn't come up with a, an idea for how to use that sound or that, that effect um, with the sounds that, the, that went along with the, the narrative. But if you can come up with a good idea, I'd like to hear it because, you know, as I thought about that, I really can't think of any reason why I would ever use that. But it's, it's good. I'd rather have it and not need it. Um, you know, it might come up. Uh, come in handy in the future but like i said it's very similar to fade in sound it's just the opposite it's fade out sound so i figured i'd just explain uh, why i chose not to use it in this case and then lastly uh, this is kind of a bonus it doesn't have anything to do with audio um, but i have here the zombie the zombie is using uh, stand and speak we use that in uh, the emotions video and you can see that I've got loaded up here Victorian Life as the um, the control sound. And the reason was I, I wanted, to, as I 
got close I wanted the zombie to, to appear um, and so I used the trigger zone to, to make him show up so you, I've got the uh, logic to just make him spawn and then if we get really close I put this trash can here to remind me where to stop because what I found was if I got too close even though I had his um, range down all the way to zero if I got any closer than this trash can he would start speaking and I could you would you would hear the um, narration twice so um, zero doesn't mean zero apparently <laughs> unfortunately uh, so I wanted to get like right up here so you could see his mouth moving uh, but if, uh, happily his mouth sort of moves as part of the uh, idol anyway so it was good enough uh, but now, uh, what you might be wondering is how did I get him to be transparent? Um, so this is kind of neat. Uh, the first thing I did was I checked the box for transparent, uh, which really only got me so far. So I want to show you the difference. If I take this and I bring that all the way up, that's what transparent gets me. And just uh, for, um, you know, for demonstration, that's not transparent. That is transparent, but it wasn't really good enough. And so here in the alpha channel, I just took that down, got it down to like 133 or something like that. That's good enough. So, so you can see right through them. So I kind of wanted him to be the ghost of the narration, just kind of recounting his life uh, during the Victorian age. And so that, that was what I was going for with that. So that's it. That's every uh, audio uh, behavior uh, explained. If you have any questions, uh, please be sure to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if you like the video, I would appreciate a like. Um, if you're new here or if you haven't already subscribed, I could use the, the subscription count, get the word out, get more people interested in Mac. So please be sure to subscribe. And as always, if you uh, want a notification when I post new videos, just click the bell icon and that'll do the job for you. Uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.